Welcome to another segment with Dave and myself, and today we are going to help those of you with the nano poisoning, which are mislabeling more gallons. Okay. A lot of you, like myself, suffer from the nano poisoning, the nanobiology, or the synthetic biology. It's trying to, you know, rewrite our DNA, rewrite our genetic code, disrupt our chromosomes, break down our mitochondria, disrupt our ATP production, and the list goes on and on. And again, to accelerate a rapid aging process. <clears throat> now, I understand the suffering that goes on with this because I myself have to fight with this all the time and I'm always constantly looking at it for solutions. So, a lot of times, when the stuff comes out, it has a Trojan horse effect. This Trojan horse effect, when it comes out, will also infect the skin as it's coming out. It's infecting the skin when it's in, and as it comes out, it further poisons the skin. Okay, because the skin is your filtering one of your filters in your body. It's a protective agent, and by breaking it down, again, it causes a major disruption on your ability to heal. So I'm going to show you a method, and one of the methods I use for my skin. As you can see, my face is a lot clearer. I do have marks on my skin because last night, every time we do a video, the night before we do a video, all of a sudden the frequencies get turned on and I have outbreaks. And I'm thinking this has been not a coincidence. This has happened almost on every video we've ever done. <laughs> you know, we're going to do a video. Dave calls it. Dave! Dave, did, did, he sets it off. The AI listens to our conversation. Hey, I'm coming by. Can we do some videos? Sure, let's go get going. I will do three or four. Okay, as soon as I hang up... <laughs> <laughs> they says, ah, oh, yeah, we'll get you, you little bastard. <laughs> your, it's your nanobots. They hear you talking yeah. and they know I'm coming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're programmed. They're, they're programmed. So they know I'm coming. So then when you look at him, say, oh, what's wrong with that guy? He looks all alive. You know, there's some, of the, some of the comments though, are so stupid. But anyway. Okay. We're going to show you a method. Okay. Simple method. We're going to use egg white. Go to the grocery store. Any grocery store. It doesn't have to. Look, the organic thing is really overplayed. Don't get sucked into organics. You don't have any. End of story. All that bullshit with the stickers, USDA, blah, 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 and Canadian, blah, blah, and American, European, blah, blah, it's all bullshit. All of it. Okay? They're planting organics in Europe, and they're genetically engineered, but they are calling it the way it is. We call everything organic in the West. Uh, the West is so effing stupid, it staggers my mind. <laughs> this rock is organic. Mm -hmm. This, this... This whatever is organic. Oh, look, an organic wall. Oh, wait, an organic ceiling. Oh, look, an organic sign. So it's Ooh. a marketing thing now. Oh, it's all it is. It's all it's been. It's all it's ever been. They, the organic standards that they've put the farmers through is such horse hockey. Because it doesn't matter what they put in the ground. If the guy beside them is spraying atrazine in the field, that farmer's got it in the water table. If they're spraying glyphosate, this guy's got it. If they're spraying organosilicone, this guy's got it too. You've never had an organic... And then the enchilada of all of them. The chemtrails. So I said, oh, that's just this series of condensation trail. I mean, seriously, when have you ever seen condensation form a tube? You know, I mean, I, we, we, we had this guy at the last minute at the Green Show. Oh, yeah, those are condensation trails. I said, bud, how old are you? <laughs> That's why I asked him. Hmm. He says, oh, I'm in my 50s, 50, late 50s or whatever. I said, so you've been around long enough to know what a condensation trail, a condensation vapor is. When you breathe out uh, condensation in the winter, you have this vapor. Does it come out like this, <laughs> out of your mouth? Uh, a nice tube. Hey, look, condensation. And it stays there. It doesn't and linger. And it stays there after you breathe it out of your mouth. Oh, yeah. What a vapor. Yes. <laughs> I wonder even like even in like the Arctic cold, you know what I mean, where people cuz you see it just coming out in a, like a smoke almost. Not it's not it doesn't come out like this. <laughs> That's pretty refined. It's a refined uh tube, do you think? Well, and it's lingering. Yeah. Well, I like the fact it's coming out, you know, like that and staying that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a condensation. I remember when we were kids, you know, looked up in the sky, seen a jet flying. A little trail about that far stick out past the plane, and it would vaporize into nothing, crystallize and disappear. Now that I'm even looking at that picture, is that one? Is that one picture with uh, all those all those con well contrails? Jeez, uh, with all the chemtrails. Uh, yeah. Not it's not like you know several added to the same no. picture. That's one no, shot. Go down to Arizona. Go to Arizona, uh, Phoenix. When I was living down there. This was an everyday occurrence. And they would even play tic-tac-toe. 
You know, they'd be, and they'd be laughing at you. Ah, you dumb bastards. Look at us. They're watching us playing tic-tac-toe. We're doing, we're, spraying, we're fumigating these dumb bastards. Yeah, fumigate them. You know, in Arizona, I w I'd wake up every morning and I'd open my door, my, my apartment. I'd look up and I the first two words that came out of my mouth, I can't repeat because they're not very um, Christian. <laughs> 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 but the vernacular was very salt of the earth. Let's put it this way. Very salt of the earth. You know. And I had some choice words that would come out of my mouth. Because I would see lines lined up in parallel, not even inches apart, going for like 40 kilometers. For those of you who don't speak metric, 25 miles. Okay. 25 miles straight out. You could see them in perfect dee 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 dee. That was a condensation trail. Boy, it was a good one. I'll tell you. Uh, like I said, when I was down there, I saw them tear the ozone. This was an interesting thing. This plane flew, and it literally cut the sky for another 40 kilometers, or 25 miles, for those who don't speak in metric. And you saw the blue sky here, the blue sky here, and space. You could see the stars. This was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then you saw a drone flying at supersonic, pumping out this white shit, covering up the gap. I told my buddy, either something came in or something left. You know, that's what happened. But this was going on. Arizona is one state. It's, it's a really good state. I like Arizona. I really like Phoenix. I like the people I met there. Really good people. I've got a lot of actors down there. And I, I'm a little partial to that state. So when I see a goof, a dumb ass like David Keith and MIT and their bullshit. For those of you down in Arizona, David Keith, this dumb bastard, who wants to go down there and put more chemicals in the atmosphere by flying a balloon. Because he is based on a computer model that he has. Now... Before I go on with this, let me explain to you the dangers of this stupidity. It goes beyond <laughs> belief that somebody from MIT is actually this effing stupid. You know, we do not know after 50 years or more of dumping nanoparticles in the atmosphere what is up there anymore because the chemicals have interacted, the fungi has interacted, the bacteria has interacted. We have components up there in the sky in the trillions and billions. We do not know. There are things up there right now that are not even on the periodic table. There is no way a computer model could have this information because we just, this year, the technology to actually explore and examine the comp compositions in the atmosphere has just been developed. It will take, and they say this, will take 20 years to actually go through the elements up there to see what is going on because we absolutely have no clue. So when somebody talks about black goo and white goo and Mr. Magoo and all this stupid shit that they talk about, guy doesn't know what he's talking about, doesn't understand what a liposome is or a hydrogel and how a technology can be utilized in this form or fashion to drop biological agents or radioactive agents into somebody else's backyard. We have seen it here in Ontario. So when you're when you got an ass like this that's coming to the state of Arizona, I would encourage you in Arizona to write to MIT and tell them to shove this up their ass sideways and tell them they want to conduct an experiment, conduct it in your own state and conduct it on the campus there because if then something goes wrong, which it will since they don't know what's up there, then they can deal with it instead of poisoning the people down in Arizona. So what's, what's the balloon supposed to be filled with? It's going to dump in um, nitro nitrogen, sulfur, and calcium. As, and the reason why they want to do this is the reason that they're perpetrating, because it's not, not a reality either. And so they can see what it's going to do up there. That's it? <laughs> let's, let's just see what happens. Let's, let's see what happens. Like the Earth is an <laughs> effing experiment. It's a lab, the Earth is a laboratory. Oh, yeah, we're going to just throw shit up there just to see what it does. Really? But, like, but like, is it for global warming? Or well, is it, you know, the, the like, is it climate change related? It, what's the... What's the... Well, they found it calcium. calcium. <laughs> I just can't believe... Oh, yeah, that's what they said? Let's just Jeez. see what it does. <laughs> because they said calcium it also has a deflective material, but it's also very highly conductive. So they're actually going to be using that as a comp composition of the chemtrails, <clears throat> again, to run a charge through it. Because, again, graphene is what they're using right now, or carbon, okay, is what they're using right now, which is more durable than silica. They were using silica before, now they're using carbon. Now they want to throw calcium up there, and we want to throw nitrogen up there. Wow, we need nitric oxide or nitric acid. More nitric acid to hit the earth, to burn the earth more. Why not? What the hell? Yeah. And then we're going to put in sulfur. Oh, sulfur, nitric oxide. Whoa! I, that's, you know, that was called uh, acid rain back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, I oh, forgot about the acid rain. Acid rain. Dumb bastard. 
on the nth degree. And this is an MIT university? What the hell are they putting out there? These are the dumbest, dumbest things I've ever seen. But they got a piece of paper. <laughs> they have a piece of paper right. that justifies the fact that they could be moronic and not and play with your side. You don't even know today by putting these elements up there that it could even possibly cause an earthquake or an earth or a shift. We've got earth sinks going on everywhere, and there's absolutely no explanation. There are explanations about it. They're harping the planet. They're causing the planet to be hit with microwave technology and radio te radio wave technology, which is causing a disruption in the tectonic plates, which is causing a major shift, and we're getting these sinkholes. But this is beyond belief stupid. So again, I'm mentioning this because this also affects your skin. Dropping nitric oxide, uh, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid on a person can cause some severe pain and, and skin damage. So, I'm going to go back to this now, after I've had my little rant. <laughs> Just as a preamble to the yes, whole... <laughs> well, because you got to understand this is the how we're being broken down. Stupid bastards like this wants to go up there and play with it, play with our atmosphere. Oh, the, la this, the Earth is a great laboratory. Let's just dump shit on the planet and see what happens. I, 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 it's just hard for me to believe. Not believe. I'm not saying that you that that's not what was said, but well, that they don't give that they don't give like a. a they're going based the rationale, like better than we just want to see what it does. That's bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. But that's what they said because they don't know what can happen. So according to them, now this guy's got a computer model. Now there's no way he can incorporate the information that's in the atmosphere. The data that's collected is not adequate because again they say they don't know what's up there. So there's no way that he can throw this in a computer and come up with a model. Yeah, that's going to give the full story because you don't have all the facts. This is why I'm so amazed that MIT would be this effing stupid. Seriously, anybody who wants to go to MIT should think twice, because this is one dumb, bloody place to get an education. If they're this effing stupid to let a moron just play up in the atmosphere over Arizona, of all places, why don't they do it over MIT? And even then, like you're saying, if there's all this pollution up in the air, you're throwing these chemicals out to see what they do, but they don't know how it's going to react with all the other things. They can't factor that in. No. No so computer wait, can model they, that. Because they don't know what's up there. Right. There's too much up there. So you have something that's questionable to begin with, now mix it in with another toxic soup of whatever. Yeah. And see what happens. Hey, so that's right, Mexico. Hey, what happened to Mexico? It just fell into the, into the Gulf. Why, what happened? Oh, we threw some <laughs> shit in the air and there goes Mexico. <laughs> no more tortillas, man. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, jeez. All those broken-hearted people, you know, no more Taco Bell. It's gone. No, that's not Mexican. Taco Bell's not Mexican. I didn't mean to insult the Mexicans. That's just, that was a bad joke. Taco Bell is basically, I wouldn't feed Taco Bell to a pig, sir. <laughs> and you got people running to it all the time. What's tastes so good? Yeah. Hey, eat your soul. Eat your genetically engineered crap. Anyway. Okay. So we're going to go back to this. Egg. Egg white. Oh, I'm going to put some egg white in here. So we're going to throw in, uh, you can put in whatever you want on this. There is no measurement. This is not a precise science. It doesn't have to be a precise science. You are making this for yourself. So you can make, you can go up or down. So I'm going to pour in. Pour it in and let's see what happens, Tony. Yeah. About that much, just under half. Okay. I'm using your MIT guys reference there. That's right. I'm, I got my computer Let's, model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. This is copper sulfate. Another video will show you how to make that. Basically, you buy the powder, mix it together, and it's done. So we're gonna pour in probably about half of that. Da da da. Oh, just went green there. We're gonna throw in some iodine. Now I'm gonna throw in about 20 or 30 drops. So I may lose count, but it doesn't matter if I throw more or less. Okay. 10, 10, okay, rosemary, why are we putting rosemary in there, because rosemary acts like BHT, you can also put BHT in here if you want to, when we put the rosemary again, 10, 20 drops, and so we're going to put 10 or 20, are you coming out, come on out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll probably put twenty. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All righty, twenty-one. Okay, now. Do I have a lid down here? I probably don't. Okay, I'm going to do this. We'll do it with this. Uh, okay, I'm going to use this blender just for this demonstration. You can do this, or you can just put a lid on it and just shake it up. Okay, doesn't matter. I love these little 250 ml bottles. Ta -da -ta -da. So you're just 
using the blender because he didn't have a lid. Yeah, so. There it is. It's done. Now what do we do with it? You just put it on. Okay. Any cut, any lesion, any uh, expulsion of the wires, fibers, fullerenes. Learn the term fullerene. Learn the term polyfullerene. Quantum dots. Jesus. Okay? There's all kinds of shit that's inside of you. Lattices, origami. These are things that this stuff is using to build. What you're going to do? What you're going to do? Then you'll have these ruggedly handsome features that I have. But you women will love that. <laughs> I don't want to look like you. <laughs> All right. Just take your fingers, dip it in, and just wipe it on. That's all you do. Now what you'll do, what you'll find, if you got even dry spots or dead zones, because when you pull this stuff out, it'll leave a pocket where the stuff is embedded and try to, uh, again, override. Now, as you, and I'll explain what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just putting it on everywhere. You know, everywhere, especially under the eyes is where a lot of you will see a lot of activity. And as you can see, I've got a triangle and an indent here. It'll pull it out. What it'll do is it's, as it's absorbing. The proteins in the egg are feeding the skin. The copper is producing the collagen. Now it has the protein uh, component in it to work with in order to regenerate the collagen in the skin. The iodine interacts as a disinfectant and also helps with reducing radioactive material because your body's, your face is being hit with radiation from, uh, from above. It's not the Fukushima bullshit that they told you about. Oh, Fukushima is going to kill us. Mm, yeah, Fukushima will never see the light of day in the West. The amount of radiation we've been exposed to have come from coal stacks, industrial stacks. Again, the chemtrails, which have which has been found to have thorium and strontium in them. And again, thorium is going to wipe out the thyroid's iodine, and the strontium is going to wipe out your skeletal structure. This is all. This shit's all been designed as a fumigant to wipe out your very core of your genetic code, your very foundation of your mitochondria is being attacked. So when you're looking at the stuff coming out, as you see, as it starts to dry, it will start to pull and tighten. This is Botox without the bullshit, basically. Okay? That's what it does. Is it'll fill the skin. And you can wear it several times. You can put it on at night before you go to bed, wake up the next day, and get a brand new face or brand new arm or brand new skin. Because, again, the combination helps in, in dealing with it. The rosemary is in there for its antioxidant properties. It's got ursolic acid in it. It's got rosemaric acid in it. Plus, it's got all the other... Uh, um, the phenols and the ter tri triterpenes in it. It's got all kinds of antioxidant properties in it. So you've got an antioxidant effect from the copper, an antioxidant effect from the, um, from the rosemary. You've got the healing effect from the egg with the phosphorus and with the, um, the proteins that are involved. It's also got vitamin A in it, so again, that helps with the skin. And then you've got the iodine, which again is a protective. So it's a win-win. It's cheap. It's easy. Saw how much of a rocket scientist thing this was, how you had to calculate right down to the minutiae to get it exactly right, to build that nuclear device to send us to the moon, right? This is how simple this is. Again, you'll feel it pull. It'll start to draw out. You'll find that, again, where you may have a pocket or a well where you had high concentrations of the nano inside uh, will fill up. Now, if you are extracting the stuff out of your face by squeezing it or whatever wash it first with a good soap suds it up like it soaps are saponins which will help again ex expel the um, stuff out of the skin because when you squeeze it out the stuff spreads all over so you need a good you use a good brush or a good washcloth with a lot of lather lather up to, in the face or the arm or wherever you've got the the uh, problem coming out once you wash it pat it dry and then apply this this way whatever has come out whatever pocket has been opened up Again, or whatever damage has been done in the skin. My one buddy, Brian396, his observation of the stuff was when it gets inside, it actually rolls the layers of skin like a, uh, like a fractal. And if you don't know what a fractal is, how many of you have ever seen some of the shows where you see the circle, and the circle has a, starts off with a little circle, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, like a, like a swirl. That's a fractal. So, again, um, 
it wraps it up like this and then starts to embed itself and entrench itself. So this, when you pull it out, you could damage several layers of skin. This can help heal the layers and can restore your wonderful pretty faces if you're women, handsome faces if you're guys. Okay, there you have it. Something simple, something sweet, you know. Botox without the bullshit. <laughs> I think you just named this. <laughs> so, and again, and this this will help a lot of you seriously. And again, if you're and if you're older, again your 50s baby, and you've been seasoned by the elements of the planet, this will help again in the recovery and the regenerating of you know your skins. It can help you keep you looking younger, sexier, and all that other stuff that you know they sell you on TV. Oh, you look sexy. You look younger. Oh, it's anti-aging. You know whatever they're telling you. You know so that you again you have it. All right. Anything else? We got it. Yep. No. We're good. Seems oh, good. we are good. Look at this. We're on a roll. All right. Till the next segment. To your health.